I'm Nancy Kamwisher, and I'm an investigator at the McGovern Institute for Brain Research. What I really want to know is what kinds of minds and brains we have. I want to know whether mentally we are assemblages of a whole bunch of special purpose processors that have been designed to solve certain kinds of problems, or whether we're generally intelligent and whether we can deal with any old kind of problem that comes our way. People have been debating for the last 200 years how the brain is organized. And although it's uncontroversial that we have visual areas and touch areas and motor control areas, it was very controversial whether high-level aspects of cognition, thinking, are organized into compartmentalized separate bits. So according to one dominant view, all of high-level cognition um, kind of happens in the same general purpose machinery. And on another view, the brain is more like a Swiss army knife with a set of highly specialized components. And one of the astonishing insights of the last 10 years is that even for high-level cognitions, for some of the most complex, abstract kinds of thinking we do, even some of those functions are organized into very specific brain regions. For example, it had been known for decades that people who had damage to the back end of their right hemisphere would sometimes selectively lose their ability to recognize faces. They could read, they could recognize objects, they could get around in the world, they could recognize voices, but they couldn't recognize faces. Not even their own face in the mirror. So that was reason to believe that there was a special purpose piece of the brain for face recognition. Uh, so we went out and looked for it and found it essentially immediately. And that was sort of expected based on lots of other lines of work, but it was still a total thrill to find it. And then in the next few years after that, we discovered more brain regions with very specific functions, one for recognizing places, one for recognizing bodies. Those were absolutely thrilling to me. I had a really brilliant graduate student named Rebecca Sachs who discovered one of the most functionally specialized regions in the human brain. And it turns on only when you think about what another person is thinking. It is a prime candidate for a region that would be affected in autism. As best as anybody can tell, the core deficit in autism is one of being able to understand other people's thoughts. We know very little about autism right now. It's kind of like biology before Darwin. There's no theory of what's going on. There's no way to tell if somebody's autistic by looking at their genes or their blood or by looking at anatomical images of their brain. So all we have right now is the clinical criteria for diagnosis. My tack is to look at the phenotype, both in terms of cognition, what mental functions are preserved, which ones are impaired, which ones might be even better than typical. Uh, we're also looking at the brains of people with autism to see what's different physically, in terms of size and physical structure, and in terms of what regions get active when people do specific things. So this is just the basic characterization of how autistic cognition and autistic brains are different from typical brains. From there on out, we're hoping that we'll discover not just a characterization of this disorder and what it looks like, but that we'll also discover distinct subtypes of autism. Because I think one of the biggest problems now with research in autism is that it's a very heterogeneous disorder. There are lots of different kinds of autism and these just aren't understood. People don't know what those different types are. And if we can discover that there are three or even 10 different kinds of autism, that will be major progress. So we're now tackling a whole new project in my lab where we're going at the question that's been uh, at the center of our field for 150 years, and that is whether language uh, has its own special purpose brain regions. And uh, many people have approached this problem, but we think we have a way to, um, to really get at it I think understanding the organization of the human brain is one of the most exciting things that we can possibly study, not just because it may have some implication for understanding human disease, I certainly hope that we make progress on those fronts, but also just at the level of understanding who we are. The brain is who we are. And so I think this uh, effort of neuroscientists to really understand the organization of the human brain is quite simply the greatest intellectual quest of all time. Thank you.